Given the regular language L, there's always a finite automaton that recognizes L. Now suppose we have a finite automaton, what language does it recognize? There's an algorithm for that, but creating the algorithm is more important than learning the algorithm. Remember, once an algorithm exists, a computer can implement it faster, cheaper, and more accurately than a human being. So how can we create an algorithm for finding the language an FA recognizes? Now finding the language a finite automaton recognizes is the same as finding all strings where we eventually end up in an accepting state. Could we break this down into smaller steps? Intuitively, this problem is hard because the initial and accepting states might be many steps apart. So what if we just tried to find strings that took us from one state to another? And we'll use the following notation. L, P, Q is the strings in our set of strings where, starting at P, we can follow the string to Q. Informally, L, P, Q are all the strings that could take us from state P to state Q. Using this notation, the language accepted by our finite automaton will be the union of L, Q naught A over all accepting states. Intuitively, it might be easier to find L, P, Q since we don't have to go all the way to an accepting state. Intuition is wrong. For example, Suppose we have our finite automaton and we want to find L of 0, 1. This seems like it would be easier since 0 and 1 are adjacent states. But we could use many paths. For example, we could go from 0 directly to 1 using the symbol A, or from 0 to 1 to 2 back to 1 using the string A, B, B, or from 0 to 1 to 1 to 1, to 1, using a repeated string of a's, and so on. So it doesn't seem to be any easier to find L01 than to find L02. So the problem is that we can detour, um, take the seeding route through many other states before ending at 1. And we can't require that we take the direct route for two reasons. First, it might end up excluding some strings from our language, and second, what does that mean anyway? So let's think about that. Since the states are numbered, or they can be numbered since they are finite, we could limit the routes we'll consider at any given time. This will work as long as we eventually include all routes. To that end, let's define L, P, Q, K, which are the set of strings where we can go from state P to state Q, and our path does not go through a state numbered higher than k. In other words, we're limiting the states we could pass through. And by restricting the states we can pass through, we can simplify the problem. But as long as we take the union over all possible k, we'll eventually include all roots. And so we find L010, those are the strings that will take us from state 0 through state 1 without passing through any state numbered higher than 0. So those are just the strings A and B since we won't pass through any states if we take A or B. Then L011, that's from 0 to 1, only passing through states numbered 1 or less, well, that's everything we had before, plus we could also do A and then an infinite loop. Finally, L012, that's from state 0 to state 1, passing through no state numbered higher than 2, which is all states, and so we get everything we had before, which will take us to state 1, but because we can also go to state 2, we can follow this with an additional string. So we can loop by using A as many times as we want. We can also take B to 2, loop around 2 as many times as we want by repeated A's, and then take B back to 1. 
And we can repeat this grand loop as many times as we want. Since LPQK includes LPQK prime for all K prime less than K, can we find LPQK recursively? Let's try it. Suppose we know LPQK. How would we find LPQK plus 1? Note that LPQK plus 1 is going to be the set of all paths from P to Q that pass through states numbered up to K plus 1. So the difference between the two are only the paths from P to Q that pass through state K plus 1 at least once. And remember, if it happens at all, it happens the first time. And so we might describe these paths as follows. We have the part of the path from P to the first occurrence of K plus 1, the first time we get to state K plus 1. Now, remember our strings are finite, so that means that the number of times we pass through state K plus 1 has to be a finite number. And if it happens a finite number of times, it happens a last time. And so there's a part of the path from the last occurrence of k plus 1 to the end state q. And then there's a part in between, which must go from k plus 1 back to k plus 1. Since the first part of the path does not pass through the state k plus 1, then these are the strings in L, P, k plus 1, k. In other words, we've gone from P to k plus 1, and only passing through states numbered k or less. Likewise, the last part will be the strings in L k plus 1 q k. In other words, we're going from state k plus 1 to q and not passing through the state k. What about the part in the middle? These are all loops that begin at state k plus 1 and end at state k plus 1. But again, any such loop must return to k plus 1 for a first time. So the loop will be included in the strings L from k plus 1 to k plus 1, not passing through any state numbered higher than k, because again, the return is the first time we've passed through a state k plus 1. And so, if we put all these together, we have the union of all the paths we originally had, L, P, Q, K, and then we have all the paths that go from P to the first occurrence of K plus 1, loop around K plus 1 however many times, and then go from K plus 1 on to K. Let's see how that works next.